So uh, this, uh, this next session, keeping the momentum going, on a fantastic couple of days so far. Um, we'll be taking stock. Uh, we've talked a lot about collaboration outside the industry, um, externally with suppliers, uh, consumers, government, wider stakeholders, customers. But I think what's important uh, to recognize is uh, the internal collaboration um, and how, necess uh, how important that is uh, for the success of the industry. Rising costs, uh, pressure on margins, global disruption means that the Mexican automotive logistics industry has to use the best technology it can and also internally collaborate to ensure that it remains competitive and successful. In this session, I'm delighted to say we have the, in, uh, the inbound logistics team from Nissan Mexicana who will share some detailed insights as to how they've collaborated and implemented new technology to improve their supply chain processes and operations. So please welcome to the stage uh, Francisco Huata, General Supervisor, Packaging, Local Production, Jorge Reynoso, General Supervisor for Inbound Logistics, Patricia Franco, Supervisor for Packaging Local Production, and Teresa Pasillas, General Supervisor for Rack Control and Export Packaging. Good morning, everyone. We are very glad to be here today sharing with you our best practices in this great industry. Uh, we are part of uh, inbound logistics from Nissan Mexico. Teresa Pasillas is responsible for our reverse logistics. Mm, Jorge Reynoso is part of uh, inbound team. And Francisco and I are part of packaging team. He's the only one single, so ladies, take notes. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to present you a case of study from uh, Nissan, Mexico, so uh, Francisco is going to help us with our <coughs> presentation. So, good morning everyone. So, before I start, I want to thank everyone to be up here. It's a great opportunity. It's our first time, so please apologize if we start speaking Spanish or... Yeah something nervous, so just help us out. Uh, I will start explaining how our region is positioned within the alliance with 10 production lines with the highest volume compared with other Nissan regions around the world. Um, talking about our local production, uh, as I mentioned before, we have a very strong uh, inbound team in Nissan, uh, which support the local production for or four plants for vehicles and for one uh, plant for our own engines. Uh, if you look at the numbers, uh, one of our best or most successful launches uh, has, has been positioned as uh, number one in sales in Mexico, which is the new Versa. I know everyone here is an expert in logistics, but I want to remark that we will only be talking about three specific joints from the supply chain, which are the three departments that we are here. Packaging department, in charge of developing the packaging for the complete supply chain for the following countries that we will show. Reverse logistics and inbound logistics. Excellent. So now going forward a little bit deeper, I will talk in uh, about our scope. As inbound logistics, we're in charge to deliver parts from nine countries, uh, where 70% are located in, at international locations, uh, and 83% comes from local suppliers. This is a huge, uh, a huge potential in cost, cost production for Nissan Mexicana. Uh, it's important to mention that Nissan Mexicana is working really hard to allocation more and more uh, all the parts in Mexico. Why? Two, two reasons. To improve the cost 
and the second one is to bring benefit to the country. Before going, we would like to know how many of you are coming from those, for any, from any of those countries? Just raise, raise your hand. hand, just to let us know. No one. Yeah. Just no one, we have Versa, <laughs> three Versas for everyone. <laughs> Thank you for your contribution. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, talking about the strategic logistic partners, we have some of you in here. Uh, we are supported by the inland part, by 13 carriers, in the maritime part, by five companies, and by the air part, air forwarders. It's really important part in the supply chain. Why? Because like OEMs, we cannot do everything alone. So we would like to emphasize that part. Uh, uh, this company, these companies allow us to move almost six million of cubic meters. Six million of cubic, cubic meters. It represents 77,000 uh, dollars per year. And if you remember the Titanic, uh, you can deliver 46 Titanic ships per year. Also, if you would like to understand how the distance that we cover by year, we can go to the moon and back almost 300 times. Nevertheless, how big our operation is, uh, we would like to emphasize that we are the benchmark on efficiency in the old alliance, Renault, Mitsubishi, and Nissan on truck efficiency, and our uh, former results was 80% of truck load. Okay, about the reverse logistics in a specific operation for returnable packaging, uh, we uh, supported 70 countries around the world one consolidation center in Mexico, and also three mass production plants in Mexico. I handle 3.8 million of packaging that is similar to, for the total population in California, US. If we try to put all these packaging in the same place in the same time, we will need 5.5 K kilometers square that it's similar to put all these packaging in 52 soccer fields. Along with the other joints in the supply chain, I have to say that uh, packaging is a very important key. Uh, we have two different departments of uh, packaging ex uh, experts, which uh, one of those uh, is uh, for mass production plant, and the other one is for export packaging. Uh, we have service for uh, 35 plants in the world and for 15 countries. That total population is distributed in 30 vehicles that we give support from Nissan and Renault. Uh, we give, we design the complete packaging for those vehicles to meet the demand from to ship, ship out from Mexico to overseas or from overseas to Mexico. Also, that packaging is also being supported by 387 suppliers. I want to say that the challenge was not packaging design. The challenge was to meet demands from those plants as, such as ergonomics, workability point of view, logistic groups, and volume mixes. You know, every plant on every destination, every country has different criteria different scope, so we need to understand each joint from those supply chains. That was the final slide for the outline. We're now going to tell you how important it is to mix these three departments into the inbound operation and how it can benefit the global KPIs for any uh, company. The challenge that we are going to present you is related uh, with lo our logistic cost per unit. 
I mean, we develop, to develop the next activities that we are going to explain, we ask ourselves some, some questions like, how many are, are we paying? How, how much are, are we paying for our logistics? Um, our uh, efficiency is good enough? Our packaging is well designed? Our uh, trucks are uh, filled up correctly? So along with those questions, if we think about truck efficiency, it means that the highest it is, the lowest logistic cost per unit we can have, which we apply on our former Centra, that we'll explain a little bit more later, with a TFR, Transportation Field Radio. It's our in internal indicator, or KPI, as for students that you may know. Uh, that 80% was good, but not enough, so we challenge it to meet 87% which is now benchmark within the Alliance, Renault, Nissan, and Mitsubishi. To support those uh, KPIs or challenges that we already have, we focus only on four pillars that are packaging optimization to have the best quantity of parts per design, to design the best cube out, to optimize the root engineering by a network design, and also if you incorporate innovation and technology, can be a better improvement, and not less but important, the reverse logistics. That is to say that we need to sit down, do a task force team, and think about changing the complete packaging catalog that we have and make it more reduced comparing to the other we have and make it more challenging for us to meet our daily demands. That gave us a process advantage, advantage to, to not change our design methodology. That gave us to, I mean, to focus on cost avoidance and not cost reduction. Why not cost reduction? Because if we focus on cost reduction, it means that it is an anti kaizen that we didn't do during planning. So if we, if we think about cost avoidance, it should be before starting the production, but if we think about cost reduction, it should be after SOP, which is, you know, hold on the trash, not worth it for everyone. So in order to support that, we need to develop our packaging suppliers by optimizing the packaging costs, have the best packaging design, and decrease our design time slot. As packaging methodology, our main criteria is considered not just uh, quality insurance, but uh, to work with the cross-functional teams to ensure not just quality, but uh, supply feeding, uh, warehouse optimization, truck filling ratio, uh, etc. So based on our methodology, we realized that our packaging returnable, returnable packaging catalog was good, but not good enough. So we, we work together to, to define some uh, extra activities, mm -hmm. because this uh, catalog was reflected in a good but low uh, truck filling ratio and a high truck definition. To improve our uh, returnable packaging catalog, we uh, start work started working with the Jorge's team to define an optimized height and length for our metal racks. So, based on a 53 inches uh, full truck. So, as you can see at the picture at the left, we define five different heights, which are stackable each other. So, you can stack a half with a 1.4 or 1.6 with uh, such uh, good benefits as uh, packaging mix into the truck. Our main objective with this activity was not just to standardize our packaging catalog, but to improve our uh, truck filling rate. So, it's a compliment. If we remember the slide from BMW, I remember that they are working very close with the people from production control, inventory levels. Our department is not completely with those uh, departments, but you know, some, sometimes breaking paradigms to be working with them, it's uh, very challenging because production might need a thousand parts, 
and the packaging has 100 parts. But uh, if we made a complement and meet a balance points, it would be the best benefits for overseas suppliers and local suppliers. So as a result, we finally uh, got just two footprints over 45 inches and five different heights. I was wrong with the stick, sorry. Um, to stack each other. So uh, it's important to say that this redesign included the main criteria for packaging design concepts, uh, accomplish inventory levels, as Francisco just explained, and a friendly operation into the production line. So now think about packaging efficiency. Is uh, packaging uh, one of the most important drivers of cost in your company? Uh, is your packaging uh, important to you, uh, important for you in your supply chain? Um, which uh, kind of criteria do you use for packaging design development? Please remember that the packaging is not only put the packaging. It has to have, as you may know, a balance between the cost of the part plus cost of the packaging. If you invest on really high packaging, would not meet the demands, and maybe your units will be a little bit higher, or logistic cost per unit will be more, much higher than we're trying to forecast. Okay. Then, keeping the same line, the, the next factor, main factor, is the inbound logistics. And the way inbound logistics related to cost reduction is how can we find the way to decrease the amount of deliveries that we already made? Uh, and all that operation in a control condition. We're going to talk now about planification and strategy and uh, visibility end to end. In a former condition and regarding the, the efficiency, we already know that we are in 87%. But in the first step, we found that we, we plan just like in a static planning, a static routing. So that was a really uh, inflexible condition and it couldn't uh, demand or achieve the demand to, to production control. In the, in the next step, the same. In the next step, uh, we change the planning in order to, to plan by week, by week a condition, and we begin to make some meal rooms uh, between regions and between uh, suppliers that we never did before. After that, we put in the table an algorithm, and this algorithm, we, we made a semi-automated condition what was the next step after we, we achieved that part? Please. Okay. We found in logistics, and in inbound logistics, three main factor, packaging design. Uh, as Patty already mentioned, uh, we are focused on how we reduce the constraints that uh, the constraints that we need to avoid to achieve the 100% of the efficiency. That part, we have already a result that gives us 187%. Uh, the next one was growing design. In this part, we are really focused to automate this part because in a semi-automatic condition, we can consider all the variables that we need to, to have the calculation in order to be really uh, high performance uh, planning. And then the next one, transport calculation, it was focused uh, on the way or a tool that allow us to calculate the, again the transport 
but with uh, some rules, business rules that we need to, to have in the table. Now, as we already mentioned, we call Synergy the same because uh, package pl plus email logistics are shipped 87%, and if we join all the new process, we can go ahead to network design. Maybe you uh, already know this, this concept. And did al this allow us to be really, really flexible chain and to be really adaptable to the condition of the volume of the demands that we really know that are changing with all the time. Next one. Okay, one of our, our most uh, achievements uh, was the, the cross dog that we that we already have. Uh, we have uh, all the flows in it by US, by Mexico, or local suppliers and maritime. Uh, so we currently make all the cross docking to deliver parts to all the plants in Mexico just on 100 uh, cubic uh, square. Sorry, square meters. Uh, and that is really, really fast, fast condition because the material in the warehouse is just one day at most. Okay, as, con as a conclusion, like inbound, we already have the, strate the strategy like with network design, and we have, we, we need to go to the next, to the next concept that was, uh, how, if, if I plan, I need to, the execution be just how I planned it before, and we need to, the end-to-end -end visibility, that was an internal system that we already developed, so that gives us a really, uh, the next step in the logistics inbound that we are really proud to, to show you. Okay, in the previous slides, we review the information about how the design packaging can generate some a big changes in the transport operation. Now I'm talking about how this also changes the returnable package operation. I think that is very important to mention that uh, I don't know if here some companies review or study how is your performance for the rovers logistics? Well, the background. This is the most simple form for the logistics chain. In Nissan, our performance for the TFR for return package to US was 64%. This is equal that every five trucks that we import with material, I return with package to US one fall. We use 16 roads for sent packaging to US with eight consolidation centers. About the transit time since Nissan to the suppliers, it's around 14 days since Nissan to the suppliers. Um, about the difference packaging that we have uh, in this time, we have a lot of difference packaging for return to US. Well, my main problem here was that all the returnable logistic roads that we have are very, very inflexible. I mean, I have I had one road for one specific, specific suppliers, and the variability for the volume for Nissan is very, very, very big. According to this, we determined three goals for decrease the logistic cost. The first one was increase the delivery flexibility, because I think that if we send one supplier in different um, logistic routes, we can improve the TFR. That is the second goal that we put, maximize the TFR. And the last one was reduce the return load time. Next one, please. 
Ok. Uh, previously in Nissan, my routine method was started. We send only one supplier in one specific route for uh, the supplier. And we have a shipping planning, draw, uh, planning program, sorry, for send in a specific day, one specific logistic route. This generates that some cases we send a low TFR to US, and this generates a low variability for the lead time to the suppliers. Okay, what did we do for solve this problem? We need to study how are the logistics since the supplier's volume, the, how was the method for design, each logistic route, the, um, su the supplier location, and we improved this method with some uh, analytics method for solve the problems. We improved the concept that, uh, that the previous explained, and now with routing concepts are different. We have a lot of um, logistic drugs that are flexible. We, we can send one type of package with different suppliers in different logistic drugs in different day. This improves the, the logistic lead time and the TFR and also the logistic cost. In a specific numbers, we improve the TFR from 64% to 78%. This is equal that every seven trucks that we import with material, we send one truck full. About the logistic roads, we generate 10 new roads that we, with six consolidation centers. And the transit time we reduce four days since the last system. Uh, so I saw some faces that are like brainstorming inside, like how, how can I improve from 1.5 to 1.7? I will spend just a little. <clears throat> when you develop a packaging, we have packaging stackable, I mean collapsible, and we have rigid packaging. So by working together, we can define in which route I can define a packaging, collapsible packaging, or reheat packaging. So it means that we have a very good improvement on the reverse logistics. Yeah, um, for the, now for the students, we get this idea with my 3PLs and with my team because we change your mind. Uh, when you are a student, it's very difficult to imagine how you can generate the changes in one company that all is standardized. But it's not difficult. You only need to change your mind and do different activities that can generate big changes in the company. Okay. And um, what are we doing with the rest of the returnable packaging operation? Well, we are studying the same scheme with the another 70 countries that we import or export packaging. According to our, our calculation, we generate with this project a lot of um, benefit with the company and with all the global alliance. So that was the final slide for the complete uh, drivers that we use for the complete uh, tacticals or activities that we did that give us a good improvement to increase our high uh, transportation field radio and challenge our logistic cost per unit. How do we challenge logistic cost per unit? Well, decreasing track quantities per year, per volume, and per usage. Well, now our visibility for improvement is increasing every, every day. Um, we started uh, working to develop uh, some new technologies, new trends and applications. Um, uh, our, our main objective with this activity is to uh, 
uh, improve our accuracy in our results and plus uh, reduce our processes and, and reduce our lead times for uh, get better results every day. Uh, we started uh, including our first Alliance full packaging laboratory from uh, fiscal year 17. We, where we can use any of our six testing machines mm -hmm. and uh, this help us to have some transportation, uh, transport simulation. Uh, starting this uh, fiscal year 19, we implement our virtual reality uh, for packaging design and additional or 3D printer for faster prototypes. And additional or uh, resistance uh, software analysis to validate and analyze some packaging materials. And this ne next fiscal year, we are going to start with our, we are working very hard to implement our RFID technology in uh, our plants in Aguascalientes. And um, it, it helps us to have a network design and our fleet management uh, stronger with the, with the uh, alliance in the in the plants. Additional, we are going to work to have our ISTA certification from, for our packaging test lab, and we are going to we're looking for we're looking forward to fiscal year 21 and so on. So if if we think about uh, virtual reality, uh, you know, students might know what it is. Uh, <clears throat> packaging design can only be not by design tools. If we use, uh, well, the software is called Gravity Sketch, which is a virtual reality. It's made of uh, Europe. Uh, if, if we think being in a company, sometimes it's difficult to be, or to go to, the ja to Japan to meet the parts physically and define the best packaging. By virtual reality, we can do it by co-working and discuss virtually with our, our counterparts in Japan, England, USA, Canada, China, and so on, and we avoid coronavirus. So <laughs> be really, really good. <laughs> so in our, that was our final slide about all the technical stuff that we show. We want to explain and you know reflect what are the key learnings or personal key learnings that we want to share with you. Okay, the first one is mine. <laughs> I think that if you question everything, you can generate big changes in your life and in the company that you work. Dream about the heaven and make it happen. It's very difficult to generate one idea and it's more difficult to make it happen. I think that the new students have a lot of ideas for improve all the concept, all the process in these companies. The only that you need is a push for generate and for solve all your paradigm in your mind and generate all your dreams. I use a simple one, win games, it means being humble, break paradigms, you know, we are kind of young still, but incorporating technology in our process and face all people in our company that has more experience than us, more everything, was a really breaking point. So being, uh, knowing another point of view from them was really, really good enough to complement with our exposure or expertise from, from them. Uh, teamwork, any opportunity for improvement can generate best changes in the organization. Uh, never refuse an idea, I think that all kind of ideas are good, so take the chance and take the, the risk to, to have uh, better results with any kind of idea. Okay. And intelligence, eliminate organizational codes. Take the risk of making mistakes just so you will, you will lead. Uh, it's part of the Teresa already talked, speakers. Uh, 
intelligence is more the way how, how you can push, how you can lead your projects in order to, to make a really change in the company. Again, it's really, it's really simple, it's really easy because the 99% of the people follow the same line. So if you change a little bit that, that way, you can change a lot of, even if it's a, a easy change that you can make. and win championships. I mean, uh, break paradigms and work with Renault. Renault has a different uh, mindset, Japanese, Europe, so try to face them was kind of difficult, but uh, the good thing is that we have better uh, KPIs than them. <clears throat> and for this one, I think that in the school, we never receive any learn about the soft skills. You only learn about the hard skills. And when you change the study for employee, it's very difficult to, to work with different people, with different mindsets. And if you try to learn about the soft skills, I think that is the good abilities that you need to learn for good, for get good words and make your dreams. So that's all our information we wanted to share. Sorry, I guess we are more time ahead, but uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> thank, you. thank you so much uh, for that fascinating uh, and very insightful, detailed presentation. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure our audience got a lot uh, to take out of that. Uh, and I'm sure you'll also agree that we're looking at four future uh, automotive logistics leaders here, so uh, there might be some pride in the office, but you should also be uh, worried because they're coming for your jobs. <laughs> uh, so you may suddenly feel a little bit older, uh, and that might be because last night's margarita is wearing off, but it's also because we've been joined uh, by a number of students from the Univers Universidad Pan America. So I'd like to say welcome to you all, and thank you for joining us. Um, I hope you can uh, participate and engage uh, for the rest of the day. I'd like to open it up to the audience to uh, ask our uh, guests from Nissan Mexicana if they have any questions on their presentations or their attitudes towards collaboration. Uh, one at the front, please. Okay, hello guys. Uh, thanks for sharing all that information. My name is Roberto Alvarez. I work with SX Well Solutions Mexico, packaging supplier, and we work with different OEMs such as GM, Ford, um, FCA, um, BMW, but not with you guys, so that is the reason that I am here right now. But uh, the main question that I would like to ask you is which are the three main challenges that you face working with uh, packaging suppliers in Mexico? One on one. The first one was to change the mindset for each packaging supplier. If I mean, what I mean with mindset, some, uh, some companies are Mexican, some are uh, US American companies, and uh, some are from uh, Brazil and so on. But uh, one of those challenges was breaking the way they were working and developing everything. So changing with the Japanese methodology was kind of difficult. Like, I want everything for yesterday, not for two weeks. I want it for yesterday. So stuff like that was kind of hard. And uh, in order to complement that, we developed internally a course, internal course, to increase uh, competitiveness from our rack suppliers. That, that's one. <laughs> I think that the second one would be that uh, it's part of uh, what Francisco was just, just explained. I think that the planning that uh, and the communication that we need to have with the packaging supplier has to be uh, very close and very uh, direct to to know the needs the, of the production plant, you know? 
not as uh, uh, focused as uh, your client is your patch supplier or your uh, vehicle manufacturing company, but uh, your your customer, your main customer, is your is a person that is uh, on the line working to assembly the vehicle. I think that the the focus on on this kind of uh, of uh, importance to, to give to the personnel that is uh, assembly the, the line is very important to, to, to achieve better results as packaging maker. And the third one, and I guess more important, is to know your tier two, tier three, tier four suppliers. So we don't have a difference on the cost. If you had a competence with another drug supplier, we might have or we can have the same cost you know, it all depends on logistics. One might be in Monterrey and the other one in Silao. But uh, if we can have the same cost, you know, materia prima, I forgot how to say it in English, sorry, but you understand. And, uh, you know, develop those tier two and tier three suppliers. That was, I guess, I don't know if we respond to your question. And nice to meet you, because it was only by email. <laughs> bueno, yo, bueno, de parte de lo que es la logística de retorno, me gustaría hablar también acerca de cómo el empaque impacta también en lo que es la logística reversa. No sé sinceramente si en el resto de las OEMs utilicen un TPL. Nuestro TPL que nosotros manejamos también es muy importante desarrollar y al momento de generar lo que es el concepto del empaque, ser conscientes de cómo puede impactar la, log la logística reversa. Hay gente que eh, necesita específicos tipos de empaque que nos puede ayudar sí en el costo logístico, pero también en la ergonomía de las personas que van a estar manejando, regresando todo ese empaque. Es muy importante lo que comentaban, desarrollar lo que son todos los proveedores de partes que tenemos. Este, en logística nos hemos creado el mindset en la poca experiencia que tenemos en planta de que es bien importante generar otro mindset en los proveedores, este, enseñarlos a cómo pueden ellos mejorar lo que son todas las operaciones. Del lado de la, del retorno del equipo vacío, sinceramente yo he investigado, hay muy poca información. Prácticamente el foco aquí es mejorar o optimizar. Very little information. We want to optimize the value chain, which is bringing the material from the suppliers to the OEMs. It would be very important for all of us to focus on the return of empty um, equipment because this is something that is just barely crawling right now and we could improve logistics significantly with this with new opportunities of uh, improvement projects and reduction projects and we could also teach our suppliers how they can improve their methods to control equipment and how this could uh, bring many improvements, not only in costs, but also in the management of the personnel who are going to be handling all this packaging in the production line. Now to wrap up, this is part of what we mentioned before, but it's uh, very important to touch on the topic of the business partners that an OEM has. Everyone has a very different business scope, but in the end, the product is made through a uh, synergistic relationship with all the businesses around it, around the OEM. So if the approach of the partner that we have has that synergy of intelligence, of leadership, of wanting to change things and not just going with the flow, we know that sometimes changing things could be very expensive in a long span of time. But if you don't dare to do so, it's just uh, continuing in the same thing. Interesting and uh, very detailed answer once again. Thank you. Um, I think we had a question there at the back. Um, hi, I'm Luis from the Universidad Panamericana. I study industrial engineering. My, I, I've actually, I actually ha uh, have two questions. I, I missed the first part of the conversation, uh, so I, I don't know if you guys already said this. The first one is, how much of this was influenced or motivated by trying to help the environment? And the second one is, um, who are your competitors? Like, who, who's your biggest competition here in Mexico? 
about the first question, <coughs> green program, we call it green program about the environment. Uh, almost 95% of a total packaging population is returnable. 5% it's only expendable packaging. So if you translate those that 5% to uh, uh, kilos or tons, it's less than one ton per month. So, you know, it's maybe standard deviation, you might know as an industrial engineer, it's uh, permitible for, for us. And regarding MO logistics, we are really worried about the, the uh, innovation on the, the transport, but it's really difficult in the, la yesterday we saw a presentation uh, that Mexico is not prepared to evolution in that part, but we are working with some carriers that offer us like another kind of uh, gas, like like uh, natural gas, something like that, in it by side uh, diesel, diesel uh, combustible. To, to complement, you know, as I said before in the during presentation, you need to find a uh, balance point between uh, product value and uh, packaging cost. Packaging cost plus uh, packaging waste, if it is too uh, heavy, it might impact transportation, CO, CO2. CO2. Yes, uh, <coughs> and also, uh, you know, our jobs per hour, or jobs per, uh, the vehicles that we do per hour in the plant, it's completely related with packaging. If I use packaging, expendable packaging, it might increase tiempo tacto, you know, increase operation, and material handling moves. So. Synergy is not only on logistics, we, we need to think about material handling, workability point of view, logistics, and inventory control. I don't know if we have your... Yes, uh, thank you, that was very well um, explained. But about, about the second question uh, with regards with the competition in Mexico, do you guys know if you, got, if you have any? Yes, we have two. Just about logistics? <laughs> about your main <laughs> operation. Uh, regarding operation, uh, I, I think, uh, a, a big competitor is Volkswagen because if we have the, the scope of the kind of uh, vehicles that they made in the, in the same uh, level, uh, we can handle with them. We, we already have four plants. Nobody has the same volume that we, but could be Volkswagen and GM. 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 Okay. Oh, well, thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank you. I think we have time maybe for one final question. If there's anything from the audience. I'll uh, use my prerogative to, to steal the mic that I'm holding. Um, you just mentioned those as competitors, but actually potentially they're collaborators in, in something like packaging. Have you, have you considered working with any other OEMs to share, the, you know, share ideas, share capacity, share equipment? Yes, actually, Patty and I, study a master degree in packaging. We had a, a classmate from Mazda, General Motors, and uh, let's see, right? Mm -hmm. And also we have close, re close relationship with the Tech de Monterrey from Campus Aguascalientes, where we have a couple of meetings, you know, sharing our best practices, what you do, what I do, and we found out that, not putting my intent to the gold medal, but uh, we are much better than them in terms of packaging, so. You know, uh, I can say that uh, last year we were attending a packaging summit in South Carolina where we met with a lot of uh, packaging experts from uh, a lot of packaging makers, uh, parts suppliers, and uh, OEMs to share best practices and uh, help us sharing some ideas. Okay, great, and uh, good to hear that the internal collaboration is being met with the external collaboration as well. Um, so I think that's, uh, that's about it for time on the, this session. So uh, please join me once again in thanking our, uh, the team uh, Nissan Mexicana for uh, sharing what they've uh, given to us today.